Hey guys, it's Alyssa Marie, your intuitive reader. Today we are doing a really fun reading. Today's reading is about who your spirit guides are and why they're with you. So today I have four piles. And before we get started though, I do wanna mention that if you're interested in a personal reading, my link to my Etsy is down below, as well as my Patreon, where we have exclusive content, giveaways, early access. I also have merch available and links to my other social media in the description box below. But today's reading is going to be very intuitively based. All my readings are very intuitive, but this one is going to be really intuitive, mainly because um, there's not cards that are going to say your spirit guide is blah, 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 right? So I'm going to be really tapping into my intuition and feeling which entities, which energies um, are with you at this time in your life. So whenever you're watching this, it is relevant but know that spirit guides, they do come and they go. Some stay with us for life. But um, I'm going to be looking at a variety of different types of spirit guides. I'm going to be looking probably, well, for sure, I'm going to be looking at animals, um, those who have passed on, um, gods and goddesses, things like that, okay? Um, this is also going to be a longer reading. So I have four piles instead of three, and I'm really going to take my time with this reading. I'm really going to try to get everything that's coming to me, what spirit is telling me for you guys. So this is gonna be a chill reading. These are probably gonna be more than 10 minutes each, which is what I usually post. Um, so I want you guys to spend a lot of time thinking about which pile you wanna pick. Okay, so I'm gonna show you each of the objects we have here. So these are the piles, one, two, three, and four. Pile one is this little ring this ring, let's see if I can get it to focus here. There we go, it's a butterfly ring. So that is pile one. Pile two is an infinity symbol, which is missing some of the stones, but there it is. There's the infinity symbol ring. And third pile is the triple moon goddess pendant. And pile four is a cute little baby Malachi. Isn't it the cutest? So little. So know that this is, like I said, going to be really chill. I want you guys to really think about which one you want. I want you to go get a snack and something to drink. And I want you to be really comfy because it's probably going to be a bit, little bit longer. And we're cool with that here. Let me know if you guys like the longer readings or not. Um, but we're going to try something a bit longer. So go ahead, pick your pile, and we're going to get started. All right, if you chose pile number one with the butterfly ring, who are your spirit guides and why are they with you? So if you skipped the, the um, beginning, just letting you know this is going to be a longer reading, longer than the 10 minutes. We're trying out something new, and I'm going to be tapping a lot into my intuition today to really see who your spirit guides are at this time. We have a lot of cards. Okay, number one here, let's see. First card out, we have the seal. Beautiful. I love seals, sea lions. So cute. Next card out, we have dreams. We then have psychic abilities. Healing. We have the Orions with unending knowledge. We have the third house with perception. Leap. You go first, the universe will catch you. We have white eagle, ancestor spirit. Connect to your lineage. A family wound or pattern can be healed now. Odin with psychic insight. Your third eye is open. See truth for what it is. Follow your intuition. 
funny it says your third eye is open because look up here third eye very open we have moon with feelings I know we have a lot of cards today we're going to try this next for your tarot we have the five of swords we have the six of shields which is the six of wands we have the love feast which is the lovers and lastly we have the four of swords okay so we have a lot of cards here. Let me move these up a bit so you can see all the cards. Okay, okay. So first off, first thing I'm gonna mention, well, let's start with the first card. You have a spirit guide that is a seal, okay? The spirit of the seal. So um, do some research into what the seal is all about. In this particular book, it mentions that the seal has a lot to do with love. Um, in partnership. So um, the seal, to me though, as well, the seal is playful. But I think with this, know that if you do see a seal come up, and, and know the difference as well between a seal and a sea lion, they are different. So the seal, when you see the seal come up in your life, know that it sends a message of love actually um, and this doesn't have to be romantic love right this can be love of any kind it's going to remind you to love to love yourself and to love others so when you notice the seal most likely you're probably going to be feeling kind of down that's what spirit's telling me you're going to be feeling kind of down about things and somehow some way the seal is going to appear whether this be a picture in person a video a drawing the word you're going to see seal and at that moment i want you to remember love love for yourself love for others and outputting life in this incarnation um the next three cards you got was dreams psychic abilities and healing so a lot of times your particular spirit guides are going to be coming to you in your dreams dreams are very important for you pile number one meaning that it is essential for you essential to record your dreams okay and the best way to record your dreams is honestly just pen and paper i know it's like the digital age and everybody does things electronically but pen and paper there's something about pen and paper that is just so what's the word i want to use like final cementing it's not like we can just easily erase it. it. To me, it's much more powerful writing physically. So when you come out of your dreams, the first thing you wanna do is write them down. Because if you say, no, I'll write them down after I go to the bathroom or after I eat breakfast, you're gonna forget. You're gonna forget with every second, more and more. So go ahead, write down all the details that you can. Also, because the dreams card is coming up, this also is telling me that you're probably very good at controlling your dreams. You might be a lucid dreamer. You might also be somebody that does experience sleep paralysis or sleepwalking or night terrors or things like that. Believe me, I would know all about that. <laughs> I, uh, I don't do it as much anymore, but mainly because I'm actually taking medication for it. Um, my night terrors actually ended up in me being violent. I would like physically scratch my husband like and hit him and stuff thinking that he was like some like some demon or something. So yeah, there's that. But um, obviously if they're not dangerous to you, they're also really good times to connect with spirits or entities. And I think for a while there when I was having all that sleep paralysis and paralysis and stuff there was a lot of stuff that I had to heal and we do have healing coming up as well for you so if you are somebody that struggles with a lot of nightmares or things like that I want you to really use them to your advantage but I also want you to work on healing okay because usually when we have troubles with our sleep there is something that is blocking us from fully healing whether that be generational trauma whether that be present day things but know that in your dreams you're going to meet your spirit guides and you might have already met your spirit guides okay now this can be in the form of animals this can be ancestors this can be passed on loved ones right gods and goddesses 
extraterrestrial beings, really keep in mind to make a dream journal. But what this card is also saying is that you can facilitate these easier than other people. So if you, along the side of crystals, um, healthy sleep hygiene, um, and mental uh, and mental manifestations, you're going to be able to really dream about things you want to see. So for instance, maybe you really want to visit um, a passed on loved one. You know, you can manifest this. You can write in a manifestation journal. It's called scripting. If you don't know about that already, I do have a channel on my video, channel on my video, a video on my channel that you guys can look at. But um, there's that. And then, you know, using certain crystals that are good for promoting dreams and things like that, you can you can manifest those particular things. Okay, moving on. Psychic abilities as well. Your third eye is very open, so that is those dream things are going to be more easy for you. You definitely astral travel in your dreams. Um, a lot of us do. I would say we all do to a certain extent, but you really do. Um, you're probably very spiritual as is. You're probably very intuitive. Um, so you probably have an idea already of who your spirit guides are. And when you do have an idea of your spirit guides, don't ever discount them because I can't possibly get all your spirit guides here in this one video. Um, so they're most likely your spirit guides too. Now let's actually talk about who your spirit guides are. So number one, I said the spirit animal of the seal. Number two, Odin, psychic insight, Odin, okay? Odin is a um, god, right? And he is, in this particular deck, he is very um, relating to psychic insight, talking about the third eye, talking about being intuitive. So know to research, if you haven't already, research the god Odin and find out all you can about him because he is a spirit guide of yours right now. He is also probably going to really help you with those psychic abilities. So calling upon him will really help you with certain um, magical manifestations or any other aspects of your life. You also got the Orions with unending knowledge. So the Orions, they are a, another star race. They are very smart, very intelligent, and they are your spirit guides. Um, I would say... I feel it's one particular Orion being who is presently alive in a higher dimension who is your spirit guide. I want you to do more research on the Orions, um, but this particular being is very, very, very intelligent and a lot of times they are delivering light codes to you and you are picking them up through your crown chakra and your third eye. So, so far that's three beings that I'm picking up. Um, we have the third house here with perception. So this this card is really relating to changing your perception about life. And I do feel that you have. I feel like you have switched your perception of your incarnation right now. You're probably going through an awakening. And when people say they're going through an awakening, keep in mind that like these awakenings aren't just lasting a couple days okay awakenings usually happen over years and you're still awakening and you're still finding out things every day and your spirit guides facilitated that okay they helped you awaken they helped you change your perspective on a lot of things in life this card again it was talking about leap you go first the universe will catch you these spirit guides that i've already mentioned they really want you to be a bit more spontaneous right now so um they also want you to just go for things maybe you plan sometimes and you plan so much to the point where you don't go for something they want you to do that now go for it okay they will catch you you also have white eagle here ancestor spirit again it says connect to your lineage a family wound or pattern can be healed now so um, maybe you do have some trauma with family members either in this lifetime or in past lifetimes but white eagle here is telling you that you definitely have an ancestor spirit so um whatever your lineage is someone from your lineage is always trying to work with you okay these beings that i'm talking about now 
so far, none of them seem transient. These are all beings that have been with you since birth. That is what I'm. Um, that is what I am uh, feeling. Now, with White Eagle, um, I also feel that he, in particular, is your spirit guide as well. So, um, one from your lineage, but also White Eagle. Um, I don't know everything about White Eagle. I'd have to grab the book, but I want you to do more research on him as well. Um, he's obviously a very powerful, healing Native American spirit um, that I think a lot of times he is probably going to be there when you are facilitating this healing. But I, I definitely feel that you have an ancestor spirit and to be honest i'm feeling that the ancestor spirit they could be of native american origin if you're native american don't have to be of course but i am still feeling like a grandfather or grandmother too that's not really an ancestor that's more of a passed on loved one so i am feeling that for some of you um with moon with feelings here this talks about um, femininity, motherly energy. Yeah, that could be that grandmother for some of you, could be a mother figure or, or somebody that actually just feels like a mother figure because sometimes it doesn't have to be your mother, but somebody that you looked up to in a motherly way, feel a feminine. So, so yeah, we have a lot going on here. Um, I hope you're keeping track because I've mentioned many spirit guides, but okay. There's a lot of emotions in this lifetime for you, I feel, and these spirit guides are really trying to help you through them. So let's look at kind of more about what you're going through here with these. So we've got the Five of Swords. Five of Swords really is indicative of conflict. So I feel like maybe you have had some conflict in this life with other people, like maybe your family members, your friends, and I do feel like you've changed your perception on it. You've kind of learned to let people go. You've kind of let to, 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 I can't talk. You've kind of learned to just let things go with the flow, to kind of let connections fade if they're meant to, heal connections if they're meant to be healed. Um, here we have the Six of Shields, also known as the Six of Wands. So know that the universe and your spirit guides are recognizing things they are recognizing what you're doing and they are proud of you we also have the lovers and we have the four of swords so i feel like you were in the five of swords and prior to this awakening you're then coming into the four of swords and the lovers with the lovers this could also be indicative of a twin flame or a soulmate relationship but i also believe that this lovers card is regarding your um relationship with your spirit guides okay because the lovers is really um signifies deep connection energetic deep connection but I, it doesn't always have to be romantic although i do feel that you will most likely if you are looking if you're hoping to in your life you will probably end up with a soulmate Okay, which is different than a twin flame. If you guys are kind of confused about that, again, there is a video on my channel explaining the two. But we have many soulmates, right? But I do see there being a very particular relationship you have with a soulmate this lifetime that is beautiful. And that doesn't have to be romantic either. It can be a friend relationship. Um, but with the Four of Swords, you move from the Five of Swords to the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is about relaxation and rest, okay? So definitely your spirit, your particular spirit has been through a lot in this lifetime and in past lifetimes. I feel like you're, you're very loving being, very heart-centered being, but um, unfortunately some things, some bad things have happened to you, some things you've been through have left wounds. So your spirit guides, okay, first off, I am feeling... I feel that all of these particular spirit guides have been with you for this lifetime, at least. Some spirit guides, possibly past lifetimes, but these are not, they are not leaving. They are not leaving. And they want you to communicate with them more. 
okay that is what they're telling me they want you to i feel like you want to but then sometimes life happens and you don't have enough time or you tell yourself you don't have enough time and then you end up not doing it um kind of sounds like i'm preaching to myself because a lot of times i would like to contact my spirit guides more i would like to do readings for myself do my spiritual stuff but you know i do it for a living i do youtube but then i also have my etsy readings and then I get to the point where I'm tired and then I don't have time for the other stuff. But that's not true. We do have time. We just have to be better at time management. So know that these spirit guides, they do want to call, call you. Well, maybe they do want to call you. But they do want to talk to you and communicate with you. I feel all of these spirit guides are going to communicate with you mainly in your dreams also in meditative states but mainly in your dreams and you're going to have these dreams more than you think so i want you to start recording them and i want you to try to facil facilitate those dreams with manifestation and with um, crystals herbs candles things like that um this is also random but when i when i everything that i'm doing here you could think it's random and there might not be any card showing this but this is what I mean by a more intuitive reading. I am getting a spirit coming through right now. This spirit is a young woman. Young, I wouldn't say young girl, like really young. I would say from the age of 13 to the age of like 19. So a teen or a young woman is coming through. You know, I, I'm trying to think, I, I'm trying to feel this out. I think this might be your ancestor. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, she just said, yeah. This is an ancestor for some of you. And depending on what lineage you come from, that's her. And she's been with you since birth. And her main purpose is to remind you where you came from. And she wants you to see where she came from. She died, though, at a young age. She died, like I said, for some reason I keep seeing between the ages of 13 and 19, she died. So this is a ghost, right? This is a, this is a dead ancestor. And I want you to know that she doesn't want to scare you either like i don't know why that's coming through but like if you've had any type of paranormal experiences in your life she's just trying to get your attention that's what she's telling me she does not mean to scare you she wants to get your attention because she really wants to teach you things she might have appeared in your dreams or she might appear in your dreams um, you might have had instances where you like hear a loud noise or, you know, there's a bunch of paranormal things that we can experience, but she's coming through for pile one. So I feel like she's with all of you in a different form, depending on your lineage. I do feel like she did meet a tragic end. Okay. And honestly, I'm, I don't want to like scare people by any means. That's not my intention. But I also don't want to lie. I don't want to lie. I feel like she committed suicide. Okay. The reason I feel that is of this card. And it keeps like I keep seeing it and I wanted to say it. But I don't want to scare people because people are like, why would I want a person that killed themselves? Why would I want them as a spirit guide? And the thing is, is that when, when she did commit suicide it changed a lot about her soul because I feel like, you know, once a soul commits suicide, it's something tragic and it's something that they can come back from when they live in further lifetimes. Okay. But it is sad, but she's not sad anymore. It's not like, I don't want you guys to think that she's like this really sad soul she's not but in that particular she she appears to me at least in the lifetime in which she did commit suicide and because it was a turning point for her soul 
and she wants to teach you the things that she has learned after that happened the way she viewed life differently in each coming lifetime the way she made decisions differently and so that's coming through i know it's very random and it had nothing really to do with the cards but it's just coming through for me sorry if that i don't mean to bring up things like suicide if it's a triggering topic i do apologize for that um I will put it in the description before you guys watch so you know that I do mention it. Um, let's see if there's anything else here. But yeah, her in particular and the White Eagle Spirit, they want to facilitate healing the most with you. They want to help heal you. And you can actually call upon them to just heal you in the present moment, but they want to heal you through your dreams and through visions. The Odin with Psychic Insight, he mainly is with you for spiritual protection, but also for expanding the third eye even more, okay? And the Orions are there to telepathically give you information into ascension. That's what they're for. And the seal is to remind you of love. And of course, the grandmother or mother or motherly person, this is a passed on loved one, they are there to just be with you, okay? Um, to just come along. I don't want to say just come along for the ride because they're not coming along for the ride. Um, but they are their protection as well, but also because they miss you, okay? Um, also, I'm going to mention the butterfly because you did pick the butterfly ring, right? Butterfly ring. So the butterfly is also a spiritual guide for you, animal, so seal and butterfly. The butterfly is all about change. The butterfly is all about transformation. And we can see that you have been through a lot and you have changed. So that's another one. But that, okay, hope you liked that. That is what I'm getting for your spirit guides, pile number one, and why they're with you. Of course, you probably have more spirit guides or have had spirit guides, but these are the ones that chose to come forward today. I hope that you kept notes. If you haven't, go ahead and, and re-watch it or just pick out the ones. Um, I'll say it one more time in case you didn't of the beings that had come through. The seal has come through, Odin and Orion being living currently in, um, in a higher dimension, a passed on young girl between the ages of 13 and 19 who unfortunately had a tragic end, a motherly figure um, either grandmother, mother, or somebody else that had a motherly figure in your lifetime that is passed on, and then white, white eagle, okay? And remember, the 13 to 19-year-old girl, she is an ancestor, okay? As well as the butterfly, if I didn't mention that, seal and butterfly. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Okay, so this is for those of you who chose the Infinity Ring. Um, but in case you skipped the beginning of the video, I do want to let you guys know that this is going to be a longer reading. Most of my readings are about 10 minutes each. This one is going to be longer and is going to be even more intuitively based. All my readings are intuitive, but um, today it's going to be even more so. So first off you guys did choose the infinity symbol so spirit is already telling me um that all the spirit guides that are going to come in today for you have been eternal in that they have been with you since the birth of your soul till the end of your soul if that's even a thing right how can we prove that but um, they're with you forever. I shouldn't say end of your soul because I don't think there's an end to the soul. But more so since the birth of your soul, just in, for your future incarnations as well. Now, we know that a lot of spirit, gu spirit guides are permanent. Some are transient. Most spirit guides, I think, are with us for our lifetime. But your spirit guides, Pile 2, have been with you in past lifetimes too. Not all of them, but the majority of them, okay? So let's see who they are and why they're here with you. Okay, first off, you have the hair. 
and we are going to be looking at a variety of different spirit guides here. We're going to be looking at spirit animals. We're going to be looking at gods and goddesses, possibly um, higher vibrational beings, angels, whatever wants to come through, passed on loved ones. We have Kalima facing fear. Major spiritual changes are unfolding. This is your chance to soar. Next, we have Mary Magdalene, Teacher Awakens. You have something important to share. Follow the inner call. Don't let anything stop you. We do have a lot of cards today, so bear with me on that. I can already see we have three spear guides that came in by name here, which is quite interesting. Usually I have to kind of ponder, but we have three that just came forward. Next, we have the Great Gathering. It's all coming together. Intuitive Hits, Soul Tribe. We have family. Let's move these up a bit. All right, family. We have transformation here. We have lighten your load. We have the Agarthans, Inner Earth Beings, Healing Gaia. Beautiful. See, so we have the Earth here and we have Inner Earth Beings. We have Sagittarius, the Voyager. We have Opposition with Balance. And for your Tarot, we have the Seven of Swords. Put those up there. We have the Three of Swords. Okay. We have the Nine of Swords. Okay. I can already tell you've been having a tough... Oh, I have to admit, my chest is feeling very heavy here. Um, when that happens, it's very heavy energies. We'll get to that. <laughs> wow. And the Five of Love or the Five of Cups. Okay. Oof, this is a heavy one, but that's okay. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You just have a very, oh, I need to do this when I do your reading. Okay, first off, let's, let's get, let's start, start with the tarot. What you have here is there has been someone in this lifetime, I feel, that's been deceptive to you, that's tricked you, could have been not a balance of energy, cheating energy, narcissist empath, you being the empath, them being the narcissist. Somehow somebody was not completely honest with you. Somebody was abusive to you most likely in, you know, could be physically, emotionally, uh, mentally. But I see here with three of swords, you do carry that heavy energy with you of heartbreak. With the nine of swords, that's all about anxiety. And the five of cups, right? That's about grief, grief that's about loss. So I do feel that you might have dealt with a relationship ending in this lifetime. If you have not, know that this has been something, a pattern that has been happening in your past lives for some reason or another. Um, and I think what that is trying to do, Spirit is telling me, is trying to teach you more about independence. But um, I do see that coming through for you guys. So I do feel a heaviness in the heart. I do feel anxiety in the brain. I do feel like you've been very anxious, very troubled soul. Okay, And I don't mean that in a bad way because we all have our troubles, but the spirit guides, your spirit guides were really trying to tell me today that this is something that you have dealt with in the past or that you're still still dealing with, okay? So there is that element there. Now let's get on to your spirit guides. So first off, let's start, start with the first card I drew. We have the hair. Um, in this deck, the hair is very um, indicative of psychic abilities, intuition, um, the hare and the rabbit, I believe they're technically different, but for you, I'm feeling the rabbit as well as the hare. So this is a spirit guide to you. And, and when you do see a rabbit, okay, know that 
this is telling you, this is going to be intuitive hits for you. Spirit is telling me that you have probably been getting a lot of intuitive hits recently with numbers, with certain symbols. The rabbit is a symbol for you and the rabbit has been a symbol for you for as long as your soul has been in um, creation, in working order, okay? It's always been the hair. The rabbit has been there always. So you might feel a connection to rabbits in this lifetime. If not, I do recommend you try to contact your rabbit spirit guide. Um, now, when we talk about animal spirit guides, of course, animals have a consciousness and whatnot, but it's more about the essence of what the spirit of a hare entails. So I want you to do more research about that. But whenever this hare, this rabbit shows up for you, especially the white rabbit, all rabbits though, I want you to pay attention to your surroundings because it is trying to tell you something, okay? It's very important. And this means if you see the rabbit in person, you see a picture of a rabbit, you hear the word rabbit or hair comes up in movies, books, that is a time. Whatever you're thinking about at that time, whatever you're dealing with at that time, that is the time in which you really need to pay attention, okay? That's your first spirit guide that's coming through. Next card you had was Kali Ma. She is a Hindu goddess facing fear. Major spiritual changes are unfolding. This is your chance to soar. So with her, she has also been your um, spirit guide for as long as she has been around and as long as you have been around. She is actually, I won't lie, like I'm actually getting this message that maybe you are a bit afraid of death. I have been, I have always been quite afraid of death. And when I say death, I mean, I guess the process of actually dying, but then what happens after death? And that's normal, right? It, we can't, we don't know what happens after death. I can say maybe what I think, you can watch what people think, but nobody really knows until we die. And I think that maybe you felt this and she, Callie, I don't know that much about her, but I do know that she's always kind of in a way kind of fearful looking, right? She's got skulls around her. And when I've seen her in books and, and imagery of her, she's, she's always kind of uh, fearful looking. And I think she's with you to actually get you used to the idea of death. We don't have to necessarily be friends with death. I was just watching a program about this. And what I was trying to say is that I've become more accepting of what death is and that it is a natural process of life. I watched two documentaries recently. I'm just going to bring them up to you. I watched, it's called A Lion in the House. It's on Netflix. Just this is a forewarning. It is extremely emotional. I bawled multiple times. But it's also very eye-opening. It's, it's sad, but it is hopeful. And A Lion in the House is about kids with cancer. And it's a documentary. But it's not like a normal documentary in the way that it doesn't have any background tracks. It's not trying to make you feel a certain way. It's just, this is how it is. It's fact. These are these kids. This is what they're dealing with. This is what their families are dealing with. I watched that. And also earlier tonight, actually, I was waiting for my phone to charge. I watched this documentary on Netflix as well called Endgame. And I don't know why I've been so drawn to stuff about death. But my spirit guides have told me the best way to conquer your fear of death is to learn more about death. Learn more about physical aspects of death. Learn more about spiritual, emotional, mental and I've been watching those and I recommend those to you if you do have a fear of death um, because it really makes you also appreciate life more and really try to live in the moment. But I do see that she is with you to actually kind of get you closer to the idea of death, but also the idea of things that scare us. Okay, that's just come through. Next, we have Mary Magdalene coming through. Teacher awakens. You have something important to share. Follow the inner call. Don't let anything stop you. So I feel that you're a natural teacher and she is there to just awaken that in you. Maybe you don't know it yet, but you are a teacher. And when I say teacher, I say this a lot in my videos, but it's important to not necessarily think of teacher as, you know, 
teacher, kids, classroom. It can be that, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. You are a teacher in many ways more than you think, okay? And you can even teach very few times and still be a teacher. Like literally if you're at home and you know you make a pie and you learned it from a recipe and somebody asks like, oh, you know, how did you make that? And you explain to them, that's a teaching moment. Now that's a very like trivial thing, making a pie, right? But it doesn't matter if it's trivial. That's all I'm saying. Like it does not matter because it's the act of teaching. It's the act of sharing knowledge. But for you, I really think it's more important knowledge. Your soul actually has been through a lot, pile two. I see this. I see that your soul has been through a shit ton okay excuse my language there's been pain there's been loss there's been grief there has been heartbreak and you have learned so much through those lessons you're actually a very evolved soul you might not think it but you are and that's what they're telling me i feel that you do have important knowledge and i think it's important spiritual knowledge and one of the things that you ha may have uh chosen or i should say you may have had trouble doing is expressing yourself in this lifetime for fear of rejection, fear of isolation, fear of yourself, because I do see this element of fear in you, okay? But you are working through it in this lifetime. So again, if you have any knowledge, even if it doesn't have its fact-based, right, okay? Like, Technically what I'm doing right now, right? There is no fact to say that this is true. There is no scientific fact saying that what I'm telling you is even true, right? But the thing is, is that the science that we have here on this planet is a materialistic science, okay? And the things that I'm doing and giving you, the information that I'm sharing, that I'm teaching you is not physical. Okay, so think of that differently. If maybe you're somebody that likes, you know, wants to believe certain things, but then you're like, where's the proof? The only proof that we can really have is physical proof and things that are not physical, how can we prove them? Right, 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 that's the thing. So I can tell you that me giving you this information is my truth. And if it resonates with you, it is your truth. We all have our own truths, okay? And usually, collectively, we will also have a truth. But speak your truth, pile two. I feel that your throat chakra might be a little underbalanced, underactive. I want you to work on speaking your truth. You don't have to speak it to everybody else, but you can speak it to yourself. And sometimes that's the hardest thing. Be okay with yourself love yourself and speak your truth and do what you want in life for yourself and and i feel that by speaking your truth and living your truth you are going to emanate this beautiful aura and when you emanate this beautiful aura you're going to actually awaken others i have also mentioned this a lot in my other videos it is very contagious to be a happy positive person to be living a certain way and you are going to automatically make people ask they're gonna say wow you look great like what what are you doing like has your life changed you know like what what are you watching what are you doing believe me it will happen and um you are gonna awaken other people to certain to speaking their truth that is one of your main life purposes i know that's not the point of this reading but that is coming through one of your main life purposes is to teach others is to share knowledge and you i know that you have it and you just have not shared it yet so mary magdalene again one of your spiritual teachers i invite you to do excuse me spiritual teachers yes but also um spirit guide so we have three so far we have the spirit animal of the hare slash rabbit we have kali ma we have mary magdalene let's see what comes up next okay we have the great gathering it's all coming together intuitive hits soul tribe yes so I can tell already, you know, you're seeing a lot of repeating numbers recently. You're having intuitive hits. You're feeling more at ease with things coming up, okay? You're finding your soul tribe. I feel for you, you might not have had the best luck with friends, with relationships, growing up, um, and in your past lives. But in this lifetime, I do feel that you are going to find your soul tribe. And it is not going to be that far away. You are going to naturally gravitate towards and people are going to naturally gravitate towards you 
in a way that you are going to have very good relationships that are right for you. When we have to do any type of forcing, when we have to beg for attention, things like that, this is not a relationship for us at the moment, okay? So keep that in mind. We don't want to be in the chasing energy. We don't want to be, nobody wants to be in that. We're going to, we're going to gravitate towards each other when we're in the same vibrational frequency, okay? So you are going to, to um, experience that soon. Okay, next we do have family transformation, lighten your load. Okay, and then we have opposition with balance. So automatically, I do feel a family member coming through for your spirit guide. Um, it could be a grandma, a grandpa, um, a cousin, sister, brother, mother, father, you know, uncle, aunt, somebody. This is somebody who has passed on. Um, I feel most likely it's probably an older energy. It's probably, I mean, it's probably a more older soul, older person, I shouldn't say soul. So like a grandparent, a, um, a grandma, even a great grandma, a great grandpa, they are present in your life. Even if you haven't met them, maybe you were a baby when they were born, when they were born. Oh my gosh, I'm getting my words so messed up today. Maybe you were a baby when they died there we go my goodness it is late just so you guys know it's four in the morning when i'm doing this that is why i'm crazy today but that's okay like i have the sleep schedule i just was being crazy today okay so it could be that now let me see this picture actually close up because i'm wondering okay those are birds and where else did i see birds I didn't. Okay. Um, birds, though, they might also be. I know that's very broad, but the idea of the bird spirit. Um, I was wondering if there are butterflies because we have a butterfly here. But okay. Anyways, so I do feel that energy. If not, could be, could also be, like I said, any other family member. Could also be somebody that felt like family to you. Somebody that you, you connected with on an energetic level. Because we do have the five of cups up here. Maybe this happened in this lifetime. You lost somebody that was close to you. They have passed away. They are there with you. And they are there to remind you and to show you that you have the opportunity to transform. And you are transforming, okay? Like a butterfly out of its cocoon. Like a butterfly out of its chrysalis. You are changing. You are really changing. You are really being reborn recently. And I think it's finally because you have accepted this idea of balance, okay? Right here it says light in your load. I do feel I'm surprised we didn't get the Ten of Wands here. But, uh, you know, this, this basically is representative of the Ten of Wands. It's taking on everybody else's problem, taking on the human collective's problem onto you so that you feel so stressed out, okay? And I feel like you have done this for millennia. Because you're a very giving person. I feel that. Very heart-centered person. Very giving. And because of that, you have a hard time saying no. And you need to work on balancing. That's coming through from your spirit, guys. Balance. Balance, give and take. Balance those things. Because if you continue to live in this type of situation where you take on everybody else's problems the world's problems it will crush you okay believe me i have dealt with this and i have recently in the last couple of years learned to say no and learn to cut out toxicities in my life sometimes it might be hard but if there are certain people in your life that are always negative that bring you down, that, that are very taking, they don't give anything, sometimes you have to let them go, even if they haven't done anything directly rude to you. Sometimes you just have to let the connection fade because it is no longer serving you. This can be with connections, this can be with a workplace, this can be with behaviors of yourself, this can do with diet, this can do with a lot of things. But lighten your load because this is going to just drown you in worry too because i always too you know worry i i'm an empath you're an empath i can tell and sometimes when you you know hang around certain people you're just like oh my god where went my energy there it's so low you turn on the news it's like there goes all your energy and it's you know you have to be able to balance you have to be able to if that does happen to you get your energy back up 
and remember to cancel out things that that are keeping you like I don't like there's some spiritual teachers say like don't watch the news I don't necessarily agree with that I think you still need to know what's happening in the world but you don't want to like always watch the news and you're like always looking like oh my god what's happening now what's happening now oh my god there's a plane crash and there was a capital riot and oh my god oh my god you know that gets like that's gonna put you down but you know you check the news for 10 minutes you're like okay that's what's happening in the world okay now I'm on to my own thing right you have to be able to balance and that is what your spirit guides are telling me another one of your spirit guides is the butterfly spirit beautiful beautiful pile one also had the butterfly spirit i believe the butterfly spirit is for a lot of people um to be honest it, butterfly spirit comes out so much and the butterfly spirit is all about change it's about rebirth it's about rising from the ashes the reason i said that too is i'm feeling like the phoenix the idea of the phoenix could be important to you as a spirit guide but both of those spirits the butterfly and the phoenix they are about change they're about finding things that we need to change and changing some people are afraid of change but change is inevitable and change is always happening you are always changing okay next we have the agarthans inner earth beings healing gaia you definitely have an agarthan spirit guide so if you don't know much about the agarthans i want you to check out my video on my channel i talk about them but briefly here i will summarize them as being these beings so some people have this theory and um that there is that the earth is hollow and inside the earth lives these beings known as the agarthans and the way that I see them, the way I have visualized them, is they're kind of like Lord of the Rings elves. Um, but they live down in the earth, and it kind of looks like Lord of the Rings type, like Rivendell. I think that's how you say it, Rivendell. Yeah. And um, like very fantasy kind of looking. But basically, they're very in tune with the seasons, very in tune with change, the change of the earth. And I want you to watch that video, but you have a spirit guide. I'm feeling like it is a female spirit guide um, and she actually wants to communicate with you. Um, and I don't know if you have communicated with her yet, but she is there. Um, next, we have Sagittarius with the Voyager. Um, so I do feel that you are going to be able to connect more with these spirit guides by traveling. Okay, I was actually talking and I don't know if I warned you that this is going to be a longer reading than I normally do. But I thought, if it comes to me, why not tell you guys? So the other day, um, like I said, I've been watching all those documentaries about death and whatnot. And I've been watching a lot. I, I try to watch, like, a documentary a lot. And I try to watch movies, too. I'm home. I work from home. And it's COVID outside. And, you know, I stay home anyway. I've always been more of a homebody. But... I've also traveled uh, from a young age. My husband is originally from Poland, but he moved to England when he was 12. And the first time I traveled somewhere, I was 19 years old and I traveled by myself and it was an amazing experience. And I got to go to Barcelona and I got to go to England and I've traveled to Canada. I've I've, you know, I've been, I've at least traveled out of the country a couple times, and thankfully I've done it at a young age. Not all of us can afford that, I know. But one thing that I brought up was to my husband was, wouldn't it be nice if the United States government, which I don't think it would possibly ever happen, but maybe it would, uh, to give people sort of a credit. So it wouldn't be like money, like they're just like, here's $3,000, but more of a credit that you can travel to any other country that you want for X amount of days with this credit and it pays for the uh, air tickets to and from, it pays for lodging, it pays, pays for a certain amount of food. And they give that to every single person once they turn 18 and they can use it once in their life. And what I was telling Roland is I think the problem, and I don't mean to hate on Americans, I am an American, but you know, there are a lot of ignorant Americans. There's a lot of ignorant people everywhere. But one of the things is I think people, it's not that they're stupid, but that they're ignorant because they're very, and people that are closed minded they haven't seen much in the world. And I think that by traveling out of the country and seeing things different than what I had and being out of my element really made my consciousness expand. And I thought, what if you did that for every person? I think the world would be a lot better of a place. I really do.
I think it, I think that it would really open up people's minds. I think there would be less racist. There would be less homophobic people. There would be less xenophobic people, okay? And the reason why people don't travel most of the time is because they can't afford it because it's expensive. But I mean, you, you think like, okay, that would be a lot for their budget, but what if they take out of the military and, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's a whole nother you know, position, and I ain't gonna talk about that. I don't want you to debate about that in the comments. It's just my opinion. What if that was an idea? So what I'm basically trying to say is spirit and the spirit guides here are telling you to be a voyager. Maybe you have traveled a lot already. If you haven't, they want you to do that. And when you travel, you're gonna open up parts of yourself and your spirit guides are gonna be even more connected to you, okay? You're gonna even meet more spirit guides I'm hearing, yep. And um, this traveling, like there's a plane here, right? So talking about traveling to different countries, but also traveling in your local area. Even if you can't afford to do this right now in your life, even traveling and trying new things, like, I don't know, like for instance, you've never been to this part of town, go there. You've never been to that restaurant, go there. You've never done this, you've never done that, do it. You know what I mean? Trying new things is really going to open, is, is really going to be beneficial for your spirit because your spirit is a Voyager spirit. Let's see if I'm getting anything else here. So we got a lot of spirit guides coming through for you, Pile 2. I'm going to um, say them again. And I want you to go ahead and write them down if you haven't. And then I want you to research them more on your own. We have the spirit of the hare slash rabbit. We have Kali Ma. We have Mary Magdalene. We have a family member or somebody that felt like a family member who has passed on in this lifetime. Okay. We have the butterfly spirit. We have an inner earth being and a Garthen spirit. And that is what is coming through for now. Let's see, anything else that I want to mention? Okay, uh, this is random, but when I said that, I looked directly at this image, which is of the cross. So I will, I will say it, Jesus Christ is coming through. Don't have to be a Christian, okay? Um, if you are, that's fine. You can be a Christian as well, but I don't identify as a Christian. I don't identify with any religion. But I still do believe that Jesus Christ was an ascended master, is an ascended master, and is a very, you know, is a very good teacher and had a lot of good things to say. Jesus Christ is one of your spirit guides as well, spirit is telling me. Okay, so maybe you have felt a connection to Jesus Christ. Let's see. That is what is coming through. I'm not having any others come through for you today, but that is quite a few that came through for you, so... More than I thought would come through. A lot of times when I like when I was doing this, I, I don't look at the cards ahead of time. Like I glance at them, but I don't come up with a message. And I think like, okay, maybe a couple spirit guides will come through. You've got quite a few. Mm. Yep, okay. I think that's it for now, pile two. I hope you enjoyed this reading. But go ahead, do more research. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. All right, this is for those of you who chose pile number three with this triple moon goddess pendant. Um, before we get started, I do want to let you guys know that this is going to be a longer reading. I usually have 10 minute readings on my channel per pile, but I'm doing four piles. It's going to be more of a chill reading. It's going to be more long. It's going to be more intuitively based, even more than my other readings, okay? Um, first off, though, we have the triple moon goddess. So I feel goddess energy to you. Um, I feel that your spirit guide is the goddess, one of them. And when I say the goddess, I use that as an archetype. So really the goddess can represent, you know, a physical goddess um, that uh, resonates with you. And we'll get into that. So like, for instance, Athena, Venus, Isis, things like that. Um, but also just the idea of the goddess. So when we talk about the goddess, we talk about fertility, abundance, emotions, feminine energies, okay? And that has nothing to do with gender. It's just the energy. So that's coming through. But let's see what you have. Um, now, when we're going through these, keep in mind there's going to be probably animals. There could be gods and goddesses, those who have passed on, ancestors, higher vibrational light beings we're gonna see all that we can get so first off we have the eagle
Oh, pfft. Isis. Did I not mention Isis when I said that? That's weird. Isis magic manifesting. Your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. Sorry, I've got dog hair everywhere in my house. I say that in about every video. Wow. Serapis Bay Ascension. Move into your true self. Rise above the darkness. The light is here. So automatically pile three. You have a strong connection with Egypt, ancient Egypt. All right, next we have transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level, deep healing. We have the throat chakra, I communicate my truth. We have happiness. And there's the butterfly again. Oh my gosh, can I, okay, really quick. In both of the piles, there was butterflies in some way or another. And I just realized that the butterfly is about in every, almost about everybody's spirit guide, the butterfly. Um, anyway, we have empowerment. We have well-being. And there's more butterflies. See what I mean? They just really like to show up. Because the butterflies are all about change and transformation. And I guess a lot of us are always, we're always changing. We're always transforming. Next, we have the ninth house with seeking, foreign travel, adventure, etc. We have Leo with the lover, expressive, creative, etc. And then we are going to look at your tarot. Lastly, we have the eight of shields, which is the eight of wands. Yes. We have the two of wisdom, which is the two of pentacles in the traditional tarot. Let's see. Let's see, how can I do this? I'm gonna put these up here so you can see these images down here. Set that over there. All right. We have the Grail Knight. He is the hermit in traditional tarot. And we have the Meloramentum. Meloramentum, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. I apologize. That is the Justice card. Okay, so you have two major arcana cards here. You have the Hermit and Justice. So um, when we have major arcana cards, not that they're necessarily better, but they are more intense energies, okay? So right away, we're going to look at those later, though. We're going to look at, this is more like what's going on in your life, kind of, these tarot cards, and these are more about your spirit guides. So let's see what comes through here. So first off, you did get the eagle. So know that the eagle is one of your spirit guides. The eagle to me is all about power, intelligence, right? Freedom. Um, so I also think of the eagle as in having eagle eyes, having very good vision. And I don't mean that in a physical sense. I mean that more in having our sights set and understanding what we wanna do with our vision also seeing clearly in situations, kind of like Queen of Swords energy, cutting through the bullshit and seeing things for the way that they are kind of energy. And I feel that you're like that anyway. You you do kind of always have like an inkling, like you know when stuff's going on, okay? And you sometimes can't explain it, but you know it. You, you can read people. I say that, okay? I believe that I can really read people. I do believe that. And I have had many instances, many, 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 where it has come true. And it does not happen often, for instance. Like when I meet somebody, you know, I don't have bad feelings. But there has been a few instances where I have met somebody first time I meet them. And I get this fucking, excuse my language, <laughs> god dang. I apologize. I don't mean to cuss on my YouTube channels. This effing gut-wrenching feeling about this particular person okay and it's turned out to be true like let me just say that certain people have turned out to be rapists certain people have turned out to be um yeah just really bad people we don't have to talk about that but my point is is you have this intuition about you maybe about people situations houses i've always felt that way about houses i'll go in somewhere and the energy just goes boom and i'm like something bad happened here um but yeah it you have that so the eagle is always there for you now there's different types of eagles this can be any eagle okay it could be a bald eagle 
can be a what other types of eagles there are can't think of them right now but any type of eagle whether you see the eagle physically picture of an eagle video of an eagle um drawing of an eagle word eagle whenever you see that that guide of the eagle the spirit of the eagle is telling you i feel for you in particular pile three to have your eyes peeled have your eyes open understand your surroundings and not always in a bad way but like understand the people around you understand the situation see things clearly that's what the eagle's calling you to do when it appears okay next we have isis and we have serapis bay so automatically you guys might have like i said a connection to ancient egypt if you do not feel a connection to ancient egypt know that you do have one okay so if you do go into manifest or manifestation if you do go into meditation and you try to do some past life regression things like that you most likely lived several past lives in egypt okay in the time of the of ancient egypt um but i do feel isis would be a great goddess to work with um serapis bay he talks about ascension in your true self right okay so again you know be yourself and you have throat shocker here uh the previous pile also had this this idea here of the throat chakra. I communicate my truth. Really make sure to communicate your truth. And when I say that, it does not have to be with other people. It can be. But like, I, I mean, you want to be truthful to other people, but you really, this is more talking about yourself. You communicate your truth to yourself. Because we all know our heart can say one thing, our brain can say another, our higher self can say another, right? Communicate your truth to yourself. What is it that you want in life? What is it what you want to do? Who do you want to be with? Those kind of questions. Who are you truly at your core? Live it. Sometimes we're afraid of who we are at our core because of really messed up things. Like if you're gay, for instance, like growing up, you know, I'm bisexual. So growing up, I didn't come out to my mother until I was older. I didn't come out to a lot of people because I thought, wow, being gay is so disgusting. Like, what? That's stupid, right? But there are social stigmas put in place that make us think that certain parts of ourselves are not good, right? If we're fat, if we're um, not white, if we're, what else does everybody hate on? Um, if we're not, if we have acne, if we don't wear makeup, if we do wear makeup, you know, like the list can go on and on. If we shave, if we don't shave, if we, it can go on and on. Body stuff, spiritual stuff, if you believe this, if you believe that, right? I want you, Pile 3, to live your truth. Live that truth. Communicate that truth to yourself. And it will bring you happiness, okay? It will bring you happiness. Here you have the blue butterfly. You also have a bird here. Um, several butterflies. Butterfly spirit, again, like I mentioned, that is another one of your spirit guides. When you see a butterfly, it's reminding you about change. And you're going to see a butterfly a lot because the butterfly always is telling you it's time to change. Because we're changing every day, okay? Pretty much. In some way or another, we are changing. So the butterfly is going to come up several times for you. But know that it is a chance to be reborn. Every day is a chance to be reborn. You also have empowerment here. Whoa, I just had like... Sometimes I have like a, a direct thought, kind of like a... Um, Claire cognizant thought just come to my brain. It's like, this is the truth, tell it, okay? You have... When I saw this image, you have a medicine woman spirit guide, okay? Um, you might be Native American or have Native roots, um, Native American roots. Um, if not, though, it doesn't matter. You have this Native American medicine woman. I don't know what tribe she would be from. I feel that she has died, okay? She has died. Like, she was a physical person, and she is there to empower you. I can't say like directly why she has chosen you, but she has. It's very interesting. I mean, we'll get more into it, but I am feeling that for you with the full moon. See the full moon again, full moon. Okay, that you picked the moon, you picked the triple moon goddess. The moon is very like affects you highly. 
Um, it's very indicative again of femininity. I feel like you do have this more tendency to kind of um, gravitate towards feminine energies. That doesn't mean people, okay? I have to make that clear because of people that watch these videos, they kind of get confused about that. Like when we talk about feminine and masculine energies, these are just energies. Like there's, like you can be a man and be highly, have highly feminine energy. And when I say that, that doesn't mean like you like to go shopping and you know, those sexist crap and things that people come up with. It doesn't mean that. It means more that you're more open, more creative, more intuitive, okay? And uh, I feel that, oh, look again, dude. Full moon, full moon, full moon. Um, with the full moon, okay, that the full moons talk about completion. So I do feel that you are coming to a end to a cycle in your life. And I really do feel like it is the end, in not a bad way, it is the end of certain ways of belief, certain ways of being. And coming into true ways of being and belief, which is going to give you happiness, which is going to empower you, which is going to change your well-being. Well-being, okay? Again, we have going towards the full moon, butterflies. And okay, just saying, blue butterfly, blue butterfly. I'm going to be even more specific, the butterfly always, but when you see a blue butterfly in particular, pay attention and that is like a sign to really change. Like, it's like, this is a major change happening right now. It's not like pushing you to change, but more like a change is happening. You are shifting. And we did have up here behind transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level. Right, okay. And I talked about this in my Age of Aquarius video. But a lot of us, were coming in, in my opinion, to the Age of Aquarius. We are changing. We are receiving light codes daily, hourly, all the time of new energies from different places, um, from higher beings. And the veils are thin and you're going to, they kept telling me instantaneous shifts, instantaneous shifts. You are going to have these shifts, pile three, and you're going to change your ways. You're going to change your opinions about a lot of things and it's going to happen soon. And these shifts, one of these shifts is you're going to speak your truth. You're going to be yourself. You are going to go for what you want in life, whether that's romance, career, you know, life purpose, no matter what it is, you're going for it, you're doing it, and you're going to be happy, empowered, and it's going to help your well-being, it's going to heal your soul, it's going to heal that, and oh my god, look over here, this is another, you could say this is a sun, right, but it's also a full moon, isn't that crazy, um, so just saying, full moon, Full moon is a great time for you. Very powerful time. A lot of people do spell work and stuff on full moons, manifestations. You in particular should really do it because you have a big connection to the moon. Big, big, big connection. Here we have the ninth house with seeking. Uh, we do have the camel here. So I'm going to mention camel spirit, also one of your spirit guides. Um, foreign travel, adventure, higher education. Da, 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 da. Yes. So this is kind of like the card I got in the last pile about voyaging. You are somebody of a seeker. You're a soul seeker. You you look inward, okay, because we do have the hermit. A lot of times, more than like physically traveling, which would also really help you, but I feel that you spiritually travel a, a lot. You, you might not have so many friends, which is cool, you know. You might have only a select few people. You're very, you're, the hermit though, he goes inward, and I feel that you go inward a lot. And if you go inward even more, you're going to find so much more about yourself, okay, and about your spirit guides. So I feel that this lifetime is full of soul seeking, of soul searching, of finding your higher purpose, understanding your higher purpose. And I also feel, though, that if you want to connect more with your spirit guys i do gotta say i recommend going to egypt at some point and going to where the great pyramids are going to some of those ancient places you're gonna it's gonna be like really powerful when you go there okay you're really gonna feel it even if like i'm saying this and you're like no i never felt anything for ancient egypt believe me there's a connection okay and the camel like yeah connection um but when you go there when you go to these places, when you pilgrimage to these places around the world, 
there are going to be certain places it's just going to open you up. Like it's going to open your mind to new things. But also you're going to come to some of these energy hot spots where you're just going to feel such a connection to earth, such a connection to the energies. Um, you also have Leo the lover. So again, you know, Leo the lover says expressive, creating, uh, loving. I do feel that that's you. I feel you're very expressive. You're very creative. Expressive, though, not necessarily because I don't feel like you're that expressive with other people, but you are expressive in your own ways. So, like, for instance, you might... Um, one way to express yourself is listening to music. You might put on music and, you you know, change your mood. You might paint a painting. You don't necessarily share it with other people, but it's just feels so good cooking whatever it is I feel that you are like that um, but with Leo coming through as well I do feel that a Leo may be significant in this lifetime okay and love is a significant significant thing in your lifetime as well but anyways how they're all helping you okay each one I talked about how they're helping individually like I said this Native American spirit she is really helping with your empowerment and healing um, Isis, your manifestation abilities, Serapis Bay, your ascension, right? Um, Eagle, I talked about those. Now, up here, we have your tarot. So with your tarot here, I... Okay, right, we have the Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands is all about, or the Shields, which is the Wands, is all about fast-moving energy, okay? This is an instantaneous shift that you're about to experience and that you are experiencing. We have the Two of Wisdom, the Two of Pentacles. That's about facing a decision, okay? So there might be some times coming up where you feel like you have to decide something. You're like, hmm, should I do this? Should I do that? I want you to really be, I want you to use that eagle spirit guide and to really focus on what you want, what, you know what I mean? Like, okay, for instance, for the longest time, I did not do what I'm doing now. I finally decided to quit my jobs, stop doing that. It wasn't for me and to focus on what is for me. This is for me, for instance, I started, I decided to start speaking my truth to myself and I didn't care what other people thought. And it, sometimes it takes a long time to get to that. But I see you changing rapidly. I have a feeling soon you're going to say, I'm not for this job. I'm not for this lifestyle. I'm not for this place. And you leave and you just do other stuff. And it's beautiful, okay? Um, but I do think the Two of Pentacles is probably also indicative of life purpose. I feel like you're kind of like, what am I here for? You know, those kind of questions. Um, with the Hermit, though, I, I feel that you already kind of embody the spirit of the Hermit. Um, you could be Virgo, um, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Don't have to be. But I do feel like that it would even benefit you more to even go more into your soul searching, go more into meditation to really find yourself. And then here with the justice card, you could also be a Libra, sun, sun, moon, or rising. But there are things that need to be balanced in your life and there are things that are going to, to be balanced, okay? There are also with justice, literally, the people are going to get what they deserve. That's how I also see justice. So if people have been bad to you, this is random, Karma is going to do its thing. And people are like, oh, that's, you know, they're like, oh, karma, it's not going to work. It is, believe me. It might take years, but it will happen. If somebody did you wrong, if you did somebody wrong, it will come back to you, okay? What comes around goes around, my friend. And that's why I want you to put your best foot forward, speak your truth, be yourself, be happy, be positive as much as you can be. Um, but that doesn't mean to not feel negative energies. You know, if you feel sad, you feel angry, feel them, but then accept them, move past them. Um, so keep in mind that if somebody did you dirty, they will, you don't have to do anything. The universe has your back. Your spirit guides have your back, even if you don't see it, right? Because how much do we really see of somebody's life? Even if you don't see it, it's, they're getting there, they're gonna get it, okay? That's all I have to say there. Um, I think that is what I'm getting. So really for you, um, there's a lot of really evolved spirit guides, okay? 
you have really evolved ones here. These are very high vibrational beings that are coming through for you. So I hope you enjoyed this pile number three, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. You chose pile number four with this itty-bitty cute little malachite. These are your spirit guides and why they're with you. So I want to let you know this is going to be a longer reading if you didn't hang around for my little intro. This is going to be a longer reading than I normally do. Um, so go ahead, get a snack, get a, get a drink, be comfy. Um, this is going to be a very intuitively based reading. All of my readings are very intuitively based, but this one really will be because I'm going to be tapping in here directly to spirit and seeing what spirit guides are coming forward for you. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay. First off, we have the air dragon. Okay. So everyone else, not that it matters what everyone else's have, but they had a physical animal. You have a higher vibrational dragon being, specifically the air dragon. We're going to talk more about that soon. Next, you have holy amethyst, divine alchemy, move beyond current challenges, focus on what you desire. You have Lady Venus, downloads and understanding. Truth is being revealed. Deep insights are coming from heaven and the astral realm. All right, I'm already getting, may I say, you have a very open third eye, a very open crown chakra. And whether you communicate with them or not at this point, you are very much so in tune with higher vibrational beings. Okay, so far we have no human type beings coming through, but we'll see what else comes through. Um, next we have mirror who or what is triggering you. Then we have compassion. Whoopsie. Compassion. Then we have justice. We have answers. Okay. We have generational trauma, past life healing. A lot of cards today, so excuse me. We have Mars with action. We have Taurus with the bombshell. And then for your tarot cards, we have the two of shields, which is the two of wands. We have the Six of Love, which is the Six of Cups. We have the Six of Wisdom, which is the Six of Pentacles. And we have the Devil card. Okay, so I have a very clear message here for who your spirit guides are. This one is very, very clear for me. They're, they were all pretty clear, but this one is extremely clear. First off... Let me just say, most of your spirit guides, pile number four, are higher vibrational beings. So in the past few piles that I just recently did, a lot of the, those were pass on loved one, ancestors, you know, animal spirits. Yours are higher vibrational. And that doesn't necessarily mean better by any means. It just means higher vibrational. So a lot of your spirits, uh, people here, are not physical, okay? Or never were physical, I should say. You do have one, though, that is. But let's go, let's go card by card. I'm getting ahead of myself. So first off, air dragon. There is a dragon spirit that exists presently in a higher dimension um, that works with you, okay? And you, even if you don't know it, they do. They probably look similar to this. Um, now, with the dragon, with the air dragon, the, it's about the element of air, which is also telling me it's kind of more of like the element of swords, this element the suit of swords, okay? So I feel that this dragon is actually by your side when you are 
trying to see things clearly. Kind of like the other pile, we had the eagle. Um, this is kind of like they're there and they're like helping you see through people, see through people's crap, see through a situation's crap, a place's crap, but also setting your eyes on what you want, okay? That's how I see the air dragon working with you. Feel like they have been with you for some time now. I don't feel like they've been with you since birth. I do feel like it has been mm, a few years that they've been with you. I feel, okay, like I've had a spirit guide uh, who is a dragon, who is a water dragon. And there have been times where I feel more connected to her and other times where I don't feel as connected. And that doesn't mean that they're gone forever, but that they might come back. I feel dragon spirits, they're kind of, they're kind of transient and you might feel connected to the spirit and then they might leave and then come back later in life. But this particular spirit they're, they're very intense dragon energies, so I want you to be aware of that. Um, but you'll definitely know when your, your air dragon is around, like the, the energy of the room will shift um, when a dragon is around. But there are dragon magic books and things like that out there, so I want you to research a little bit more about dragons, okay? That, that is one of, one of your guides, um, a particular dragon. It's a very, dragons are very old, it's a very ancient being, okay? Um, we also have Holy Amethyst. This is also a being, a higher vibrational being. I don't know too much about her. I do recommend looking her up. But she's coming through to really tell you about alchemizing energy. Okay? One of our goals here on Earth, if you're a starseed, which I really do feel starseed vibes from you, um, your goal is to alchemize energy, is to change the energy that we have here. And by changing energy, I mean... Uh, trying to stray away from 3D consciousness and move more into the 5D consciousness. So for instance, 3D, 3D emotions, you know, hate, lust, things like that, fear, moving into 5D, unconditional love, forgiveness, happiness, those are fifth dimensional um, emotions and states of being. And by you living those, you are going to shift and you're going to alchemize that energy within yourself and try to and in turn alchemize the energy within the human consciousness and the human collective so that's what amethyst is there amethyst just saying is probably a stone that you're really connected to or that you would be very good working with amethyst is one of my favorite crystals um using amethyst in any way if you're manifesting in your craft in your baths things like that is a good idea but she is with you I do recommend looking more up about her. She has been with you forever, I feel, for at least this entire lifetime, probably multiple lifetimes, maybe even since the birth of your soul. Next, we have Lady Venus. She's another one. Lady Venus, um, she's a Venusian. She actually came to me to tell me about the Venusians. Um, I do, I believe, do I have a, I think I have a video about the Venusians. I apologize if I don't, but I'm pretty sure I do on my channel um, here. If I don't, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure I do. Either way, the Venusians, they're all about love again, but unconditional love, like, like what I was talking about, 5D love. But she and the Venusians are really having a lot to do with Earth's ascension right now. She works with you. You might've seen a being like her. She's kind of angelic looking all of the Venusians are. She is really, really high vibrational, really all about love, and you're going to be receiving a lot of downloads from her in particular, and it's going to change your understanding about your life purpose, okay? But her card says, truth is being revealed, deep insights are coming from heaven and the astral realm, right? So the truth. Um, a lot of the other piles talked about the throat chakra, live your truth your truth though is going to be altered it's going to be changing and i feel that a lot of this truth is going to be changed due to information that you intercept from lady venus from holy amethyst from these higher vibrational beings but um she's definitely coming through next here we have um mirror who or what is triggering you I know this talk, this card is talking about triggering, but the way the imagery is, I do feel like another one of your spirit guides is your higher self. Now, everybody's higher self is their spirit guide, okay? 
but your higher self in particular is very in tune with you and you are very so close to um to communicating fully with your higher self you just you just have to work at it more but basically the veil is very thin there for you but it does talk about who or what is triggering you but it says mirror mirror i do feel like it is inner i feel if you contact your higher self you will see a lot of the issues being revealed that they are inner issues you also have generational trauma here so i do feel that your soul is an old soul and then it has been through a lot okay you have been through a lot of traumatic um things and your soul, you know, has that experience, but also that trauma from it. I do think doing doing a past life regression and healing. And when I say that, people probably think like, oh my God, I got to go buy something. You don't got to buy something. You can do a lot of your own spiritual work um, easily. Uh, some people are better at it, yes. And so it's easier to go to somebody else. But you can really train yourself to become more intuitive. You can train yourself to meditate better, to all of these things. So I do recommend you try to be a little bit more spiritual even than you are now. I recommend implementing, you know, daily meditation. I recommend you have a dream journal, you manifest more. Um, but in particular, I want you to do a lot of past life healing. I want you to envision your past lives. This can take a long time. Like if you're if you're not somebody who meditates and you're not really, I shouldn't say good at that yet, but experience with that yet, it might be difficult. But also I want you to change your idea of what meditation is. Some people will say like, oh, you gotta be in the lotus position and you gotta do this and you gotta do that. I don't believe that personally. I think I, for instance, when I meditate, I lie down and I close my eyes and I relax. And it's okay if you open your eyes sometime. It's okay if your thoughts wander. Um, but really trust that all the information that's coming to you in a meditative state and when you're just sitting there is vital information. So sometimes you'll be sitting there and you'll just get this instantaneous, like, what was that? That's a download, okay? And if you, all the downloads are important. So don't think like, was that my imagination? Like if you're sitting there, for instance, and you're watching TV and all of a sudden, you're like you get this you get this understanding of some of death or this understanding of it could be anything it doesn't even have to be completely i it doesn't have to be like this great tremendous thing it can be like you know lady venus is pushing you to change your diet so you get this thing you're like oh i don't want to eat as much meat anymore you change it lady venus is pushing you to to you know, change your job, you do it. You know what I mean? It's acting on those things. It can be little things. It can be on the grand scale. So that's happening a lot. Now, we also have compassion justice, right? You are a compassionate individual. I feel that very heart-centered. Um, know that there is a lot of compassion also being sent to Gaia right now, to Earth. And with justice coming through oh, as well, I'm pretty sure I said this, this in the last group, they got the justice tarot card. Karma is a thing. And if you are worried about if somebody did you dirty, because, okay, past life healing, this could also have to do with not only generational trauma, but now trauma. If they did you dirty, they're going to get it, okay? They're going to get what they deserve, what comes around, what goes around. If you did somebody dirty, you're going to get what you deserve, right? There always is an equal exchange of energy, and it will happen. So just trust the universe. Don't trust, I mean, don't think that you have to do anything. Trust the universe, it will happen. You also have answers. So again, you are getting answers to your questions from these spirit guides, but because of this card, I do feel a grandfatherly energy for some of you. Um, could also be a grandmother. I feel an elderly energy. And I do feel that they have a lot of the answers too. They are a spirit guide that follows you in this lifetime. Um, this could also be a great grandparent. Um, but when I say follows you, I mean, it's just there presently. And um, I do feel like a lot of the questions that you have about why this, why that, you're, you're going to have kind of instantaneous revelations about these questions via downloads. And these downloads are going to probably come in your sleep. Okay, so pay attention to your dreams. But I feel that when I wake up, sometimes I do have a lot of shift in energy, but also really when you're just sitting there too, like be prepared for that. Um, let's see, anything else I want to mention? Yes, so we also have up there, oh, of course I want to mention more, I forgot about those cards up there. We have Mars with action, 
and we have Taurus. So Taurus, you could be a Taurus, um, Sun, Moon, and Rising. You also could be a Libra because we have Justice down there. Um, don't have to be, but uh, there might be a Taurus that's very important in your life. But I do feel, you know, with the two of wands here, you, you do do a lot of thinking about your life path, about your purpose. You're kind of like, should I go this way? Should I go that way? And I do think that you need to really tap into what your truth is, tap into those downloads you're receiving from your guides um, to really know which way to go. I do really see your spirit guides are telling me really to implement a routine, some sort of routine-based thing, okay? Because Taurus is very practical, productive. So, you know, if the, if the routine is, it can start small. Like maybe your routine is you meditate for five minutes every day, okay? It's like very small. It can be, but try to do some not everybody likes having a routine, but I think that you in particular would benefit from it. But we also have Mars with action as well. And that kind of goes with what I was saying. I still do think with the two of wands, I think you're a little bit stuck in the two of wands. I think that maybe it would be a good idea for you to be a bit more self-starting, to be a bit more spontaneous. Um, you also have the six of cups. The six of cups is about reminiscing and actually like look at this image. The Six of Cups indicates the past. The way I see this is you see like this elderly man here. He is looking at these little kids playing. That's the way I see this image. And he's kind of like, you know, missing that, reminiscing. I do feel like maybe that is with you now. And there's nothing wrong with reminiscing once in a while, right? We can all, we can reminisce, but we don't want to be stuck in that energy. And okay, I do have to mention this too. There is that old man again dying here I, I i feel that this man is learning things from this man with the six of pentacles here giving to this man um six of pentacles telling me again you're very generous very giving um but you do need to find that equal exchange of give or take because some people do take from you unfortunately but i do feel like this is this grandfather spirit again or grandmother spirit kind of like thinking about you, thinking about when they were younger still that kind of follows you. Maybe you help care for them, but that's coming through for some of you. For the rest of you, I do feel um, if if you didn't lose anybody that's older, um, I like I said, could be great grandparent, but you know, I do think that it's important to, you know, have, because we'll always have memories with people and it's important to honor those memories, but we don't want to get stuck in that. I do feel a little bit like maybe you can get stuck in that and that does prevent you from, from um, ascending of, of being, of raising your vibration. You also have the devil coming and the devil really is right next to the six of pentacles. So that really does um, reiterate to me that you are somebody that has a toxicity with people and giving so sometimes it's hard to hear but know that you can't always give it will crush you i said that to another group it will crush you believe me it will drain you it will bleed you dry of all of your life force energy okay um it will it's good to be giving, but you have to be able to say no. You have to be able to cut out toxicities. There are going to be people in your life. I feel like there are people in your life that have caused trauma because of this. Okay. But with the devil here, the devil is saying that you're bound to these people. So you might feel that you're bound to these people or to the situation. And this can also be about yourself, right? You could have an addiction to something to some substance, right, to food, to anything, but it can also be with another person or situation that, you know, see it how it, how it fits for you, how it resonates, because this is a general reading, but this thing needs to be cut out, whatever it is, this person, this thing, whatever, it needs to be let go of, and you need to say no, you need to set boundaries, Okay, that's just another thing. And I feel like these beings are going to help you set boundaries. <clears throat> um, 
I also have the bull here coming through. So the bull is also another one of your spirit guides. I, I do feel the bull again is um, kind of telling you to uh, be strong, be strong through this stuff that has happened to you, but also see clearly. So we have a lot coming through for you today. Let me just, I want you to write these down. So if you haven't already, like actually go and write these down and I'll repeat them here and do more research. So number one, you have an air dragon spirit. Number two, you have a being known as Holy Amethyst. Number three, you have Lady Venus. Number four, you have an elderly man or woman. So feeling like it's familial, I'm feeling like it's great, great grandpa, great grandma, or grandma or grandpa. Um, you have the bull, which is a physical animal. Um, you have the horse as well, because there is a horse here. You have the horse. Let's see. What else? Did, I don't think I mentioned anything else. Hmm. Oh, and your higher self, okay? Which kind of seems obvious, but a lot of people don't realize that their higher self is your spirit guide. Um, this is also random, but I do think water would be a good element. Because here we have drowning, okay? And this is actually from the deck I created. I really think this is a great card for this deck because you are drown like this person is drowning right and they're drowning because of the trauma and the fact that they need to heal and I kind of feel like this they're more like peeking into the water looking at their reflection but I, I, I feel this element of water so maybe you're a water sign but I, I do feel like actually being near the water could help you heal. Um, in ways, whether that be outside or whether that be in the bath, in the shower, right? Also crystals that represent the element of water. Um, and of course, we have the element of air here and we have fire up here, but I feel like air and water are really ones that are coming through. But yes, that is the spirit guides and what they're doing and how they're helping you. Um, pile number four. I hope you enjoyed this reading and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.